Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do an oil painting that's uh, going to be a little bit different than some of the ones I've done. Um, but uh, it's a uh, sunrise painting that has a lot of mist in it. So we're going to be working with a sort of misty scene, a sunrise scene, and uh, it's a photo of, a, of a, uh, an Indiana farm in sunri at sunrise with a lot of mist over the field. So uh, I have a photo of it here, you can see on my uh, easel. Um, and I also have taken, a, uh, taken time to do a uh, value map or a value plan. They're called, some artists call them by different names, but basically they're designed to uh, lay out the painting in maybe three values, a dark value, a mid value, and a light value. So in this case, I want to have a uh, very light value for the sky because it is a sunrise. I want to have a dark value for the middle ground and I want to have a sort of a medium value for the foreground. So uh, you can see on the uh, value plan that I have that uh, it's uh, that's the way I'm going to try to think about doing it at least, at least keep the colors in those value ranges. So um, this is a painting that will be used in our October 16th, uh, 2013 oil painting class and I hope you like it. hope you try it at home if you can't come to the class. Uh, today's painting is going to be on a uh, 11 by 14 canvas as usual. I have this canvas toned with gray gesso as you can see. I also have a sketch on the on the canvas already completed um, and uh, hopefully you can see that it's uh, it's actually done in white chalk and uh, I've started using this because I have these panels uh, of these canvases toned in gray and the white chalk uh, white chalk. It's really called white charcoal. It's a uh, pencil that's uh, made by General General Pencil Corporation, um, and it's uh, just called white charcoal. Um, so uh, we'll be using that in our class, and the students will actually be doing a, a rough sketch on their own canvas for this painting. Um, in addition, let me make sure we're all aligned up here, so we don't have any out of alignments on our video. I want to make sure that this is properly aligned. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is uh, put some black gesso now on this painting. I have a uh, watercolor type brush that's used for watercolor acrylics, um, mostly water-based uh, paints. And the gesso, the gesso is an acrylic type medium, so you can put acrylic medium on canvas then put oil over it and it's not a problem. Don't do it the other way. Don't put oil on and then put acrylic over it. It won't work. So um, first I'm going to do is start with this uh, 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 black gesso. And uh, before I do that, I would like to just go over quickly the, uh, the paints again and the, and the brushes. Uh, you probably know what they are, but I will go over them very quickly. Um, the uh, paints we're using are the Bob Ross paints and I have Titanium white, I have uh, Thalo blue, Prussian blue, Midnight black, Van Dyke brown, Dark Sienna, Alizarin crimson, uh, Sap green, Cadmium yellow, Yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and Bright red. And I also have added a color called Ultra uh, Violet, which is a, a Grumbacher color uh, to the palette. And uh, it just helps me get some nice dark purples or uh, dark colors that uh, I uh, can't get easily other way. So uh, anyway, that's the, the, the paints. The brushes are the uh, standard uh, Bob Ross set that we use, a one inch landscape brush, a number three fan brush. Uh, we have a number two rigger and we have the, the painting knife. I don't know if I'll use the painting knife much on this, but uh, I have it in the palette. And I also have my uh, favorite uh, number 10 filbert brush that I use. So anyway, without uh, any more talking from me, let's get going on this thing. I have my black gesso on a uh, on a uh, paper plate here and uh, we're going to start out by just touching in the areas of this barn. We have a barn and we have a, uh, some, a little uh, silo back here that's uh, all going to be in uh, really shadow, or not shadow as much as it is to mist over it and make it look like it's a foggy, foggy day. So we'll see how this works. Uh, I haven't tried this before, but uh, I'm going to try it today and see how it works. If uh, this video ends up on, on YouTube or 
I make a DVD out of it, you'll know this technique worked. Otherwise, you'll never know it because I won't put it out if it doesn't work. But we're going to give it a good try here and see what happens. Um, so I'm just painting in a real light coat here of this black gesso to outline this barn and the uh, two silos that are attached to it here, as you can see. Hopefully that's showing up. There's a little another building right back here that's going to be also in, uh, in a misty form. They have some uh, fields in front of them. There's also a few, uh, don't need much of this black gesso, just a little bit. There's also some uh, trees and bushes here that are kind of close that are kind of connect this dark and uh, so I'm just going to kind of lay these in uh, spread them out over here and we'll have uh, some interesting um, things to make mist over so uh, this will dry very quickly this is water-based paint as I mentioned and uh, it's going to dry very fast so uh, while it's drying I'm going to uh, go ahead and put on my liquid white and start with the sky and get going on it but uh, that's kind of all I wanted to do here is just sort of put in some nice interesting shapes a nice um, set of uh, dark dark shapes there all right so I'm gonna put this wash out this brush you have to wash this out you don't want to leave this gesso in these brushes very long um, uh, it will uh, it will harden and uh, you'll lose your brush. So I'm going to uh, get it washed out with water and make sure that this brush is okay so I don't mess it up. Okay, so that's that. Let's get going with the liquid white. All right, liquid white now are going to be um, is going to be on the uh, top, and uh, so I'm using my one inch landscape brush. And I have a liquid white on another paper plate here. Um, and uh, the sketch I have really has uh, some dark clouds in it, uh, as you may have noticed when I showed you the painting, uh, the photograph we're working from, actually. Um, but I want to be able to get paint on this canvas very quickly up here in the sky. So I'm going to use this white, liquid white, as we normally do. To, uh, lay on quite a bit of cover quite a bit of this canvas so I can see this uh, black gesso now is uh, really starting to dry it's not completely dry yet but it's uh, getting very close and uh, I think I'll just Stop with that right about there. See, see how that works. Um, I may use a little more of this later, but right now that's all I want of the uh, liquid white. So let's clean that out of the brush. Now our our sky really has a uh, interesting color to it, and I may pump these colors up and not leave them quite so so uh, mild or bland or whatever color you want to what do you want to call it I'm going to take some bright red I'm going to take some yellow ochre I'm going to make myself a color here that's going to be close to the horizon it's sort of an orangish color I'm going to add some white to it lighten it up get sort of a pinkish orange color and we'll see what that looks like right down around here like this could be brighter could be whiter um, this is where the Sun is really coming out here behind these uh, there's a row of trees back here behind this this uh, barn and uh, I just want to get this sky in there's uh, Guy and it kind of turns gray as it gets down closer. Uh, up here, there's more white in it. Um, there's a few spots up here. Different different sections are just have a lot of this this color in it. Um, 
but I want it to be redder, a warm red. That's why I'm using this bright red as opposed to a lizard uh, red. But I want it to be kind of red right in here. Or a little redder than that, maybe. Now, see, I'm starting to paint right over that uh, silo back there, and you can actually see that it's uh, almost dry enough to, to resist it. Um, still a little bit, a little bit wet. Um, I may be pushing this too fast, but uh, I want to uh, get this on as quickly as possible. Gotta watch my colors on my palette here. They tend to run a little bit when I paint this have this palette set up vertically, but it makes it so much easier for me to show you my colors and show you what colors I'm picking up on the brush if I use a vertical palette as opposed to a horizontal palette. All right, um, in here we also have now in the sky, I'm going to get just, I haven't cleaned my brush, but I'm picking up some uh, midnight black. And with this orange color here, it's sort of turning to a grayish purple color and we're going to have some of that up here along the top get a little more black and we've got this white liquid white on the canvas so it's actually lighting lightening it up a little bit here and there so we're getting a very interesting this this painting is as much about the sky as it is about anything else um, So in here we're going to put in some, some more of this dark color and um, still using this big brush, getting a lot of paint on here quickly, covering a lot of canvas in a hurry. And we have a lot of it down here toward the horizon. I'll put a little lab, more of this, uh, pick up a little bit of this violet in there and see what that does. That's going to change the color a little bit so we don't have all one color. So these colors, as long as they're somewhat transparent, um, they'll actually give a very nice, you'll be able to see, see this underpainting through them. Uh, and I'm just using this now to sort of just blend this sky very, very lightly. Nice horizontal streaks. Picked up a little hair there. Let's get that off. Okay, um, I think I want some white in some areas that maybe brighten it up a little bit, like right in here. Put a little more titanium white in some spots. It's a little spot that has some titanium white right in here. So the sun is sort of in this area. Um, if you can uh, make that out, it looks like the sun is uh, sort of in that area. And uh, it's going to be pushing through this fog. And uh, we're going to have an early morning fog here. So let's just put this in and sort of blend it out a little bit. We don't want really strong looking clouds. We don't want a lot of hard edges but we want to have the right colors in here. I think I'm going to pick up a little more of this orange. I still have not cleaned out my brush. I'm still using this big old one inch brush and uh, I'm getting these colors all mingled together in this brush. So I have all these colors going on in here. So I'm going to put in some some other these original colors back in here. Uh, to sort of darken up some areas and, and give us give us a little more definition of these clouds. I don't want them to be all sort of pastel looking. I want to have some accents here and there to show that there is some clouds in the sky. So just kind of do it however it makes you happy. You don't have to, there's no set pattern for this. Um, but make sure you have some uh, good definition here. I'm putting in some more dark in here. So if you darken this up, you'll make the, the, the uh, colors around it will light will look will look brighter if you dark, put dark around it. You get the contrast going. So.
So that's that. Let's see here. Maybe just a little bit of dark in the corners up here. Like that. And uh, maybe a little more over here. Okay, let's take some light, slight light swipes across. Very, very light. Just touching it, just barely. Okay. I think, I think that's my sky. Let me step back and take a look. See if it looks like uh, the sky that's in the paint, pick, photograph a little bit. It's pretty close. Um, as you can see, we've uh, covered uh, a good piece of the canvas here. Um, I got that. Maybe I'll just come back and hit just a little more highlights in here. Maybe a couple of spots in here like that. And then there's a few over here. Um, and just softly blend that out a little bit so it lightens those areas up. And if it looks like it needs more sunlight in there, I may come back and hit that again. All right. <clears throat> That's the sky for now. And I may want to touch it later, but I may not. I may just like it the way it is. Okay, now we're going to put in this row of trees. There's a row of trees in the, in the far distance. I'm going to get out my uh, filbert brush and, uh, and start working on uh, some, a row of trees behind this. This is where I've got the black gesso. I see one spot of black gesso that's not really quite dried off yet. So I want to pick that up and get that on my paper towel here just uh, so that I have have a good dry surface to paint on here. That black gesso is pretty well pretty well dried. So in the uh, few minutes that we've been painting here, um, that black gesso I put on and it's, uh, it's pretty well dried. So let's put in this back row of trees. They're going to be sort of a um, lavender color, I want to say. Uh, but they're going to be, be a little misty too, so I'm going to put some a little bit of my blue together and a little bit of my violet together and get a uh, set of trees back here in the distance that uh, are sort of uh, going to be faint. Uh, when I get done with them, I'll come back and maybe mist over the top of them a little bit to uh, sort of show this. Uh, there may be some greens in there, so let's pick up a little green in the brush. and. Uh, the colors aren't going to be uh, that noticeable if, if I get done, when I miss this, if I do it right. Um, but there's a whole stand of trees off in the distance back here. And uh, it's just more farm field and uh, the borders around the farm field. So I'm using this filbert brush in a sort of pushing up, pushing up. Uh, pulling in my vi uh, ultraviolet and uh, some of my blues, threw a little green in there, a little sap green. Um, this really, uh, in the photograph, almost looks like a straight line. And uh, if you've heard me talk before, you know that we don't want straight lines in the distance like this. This gives too much of a... Uh, um, I don't know, it's a boring appearance actually in the eye. When the eye travels by these trees, if it's a straight line, the eye just moves very quickly. So you want to put some uh, up and downs in here, make some color changes, uh, make this so that it's uh, pleasing to look at. Uh, one artist calls this a graceful line, graceful lines on the top. Graceful lines or melodic lines, sometimes he calls them. Um, uh, and uh, he's one who studies with some of the best landscape painters in the country. Uh, so I kind of trust what he says when, you, when he talks about making anything in, the, anything in the background like this, making it have some pleasing shapes between colors and, uh, and um, these objects in the background. You really... I'm not painting specific trees, but you know those are trees back there because of the shape of the edge. You can always tell what the what an object is if, if you paint it right. 
You can tell what it is by looking at the edge, the edge of these objects. This is really just a sort of a greenish purple line back here. Um, but you can tell that those are supposed to be trees back there because of the, of the edge. When you look along the top of this, you see that silhouette, and it makes them look very, very uh, undulating up and down, uh, different colors, different shapes, throwing in the, some of the greens and some of the blues here. And uh, it's very, uh, very quick to do that, uh, fairly easy. Um, we do have some other trees that are darker in, in front of these, so I'm going to make sure I have this done. I have this area. I'm going to miss this area now. Uh, usually when we use the liquid white to mist with, we uh, have it on the, in the underpainting and we use the brush and we stipple it. We kind of pound on the canvas. Uh, if you've ever watched a Bob Ross video, you know he, he does that a lot. Um, the other way to get a misting effect is to take, take the, uh, take the uh, liquid white on your brush and put it on on top of what's there. So um, I'm going to try that now and see if we can get that in. I'm going to go back to my uh, one inch landscape brush, pick up some of this liquid white that's on my paper plate and just start putting in some mist back here. I am going to pound it, but instead of the liquid white coming through from the canvas underneath, I'm actually putting it on with this brush. So you can see the misting effect here. And this misting will really make the, uh, it's what makes this scene uh, look hazy and foggy and that sort of thing. And uh, so if I don't have the liquid white underneath, but I can put it on on top and then just pound the heck out of it um, as I would if it were underneath, I get this nice misty look back there in the distance. May have a little too much mist on there, but uh, that's all right. We'll uh, so we have some fog that goes up and around and in and out of these trees by just pushing, stabbing the brush, and we call this stippling in the uh, traditional sense of painting, you're pounding on top of paint that's there. And uh, so we get an interesting line of uh, trees and mist back there in the distance. Okay, kind of like that, that will be good enough for now. Clean that liquid white out of this brush. Now we're going to put another row of trees in that uh, sort of go around this, uh, in front of this building. I'm going to get my filbert back. And uh, these trees now are going to be darker. I'm going to get, pick up a little of this uh, Prussian blue and maybe a little black. Um, get a dark color here. Maybe even add a little bit of this brown. Because uh, they're, they're really in silhouette. Um, and they're sort of all over this area here. We've got some big ones in here like this that sort of stick up. Most of them aren't, aren't larger than the uh, trees behind them, but a few of them do stick up here above the trees behind them. So you can still see the mist from the distance. Um, and. Uh, because I have a lot of paint on here now, I have a lot of liquid white underneath. Um, they're actually uh, lightening up, so I want this really, really dark. That's why I added these dark colors of black and Prussian blue and violet. So these are, I don't want to make a complete row of these trees, but I do want to make a set of trees here that are, you can tell they're in Silhouette. Maybe there's another little tree sitting over here by itself. Uh, as long as the contrast is there, as long as it's darker than what's behind it, it will stand out and you'll know that that's a 
tree of some kind sitting out there by itself. Um, over here we have a few, not much, but there's a few trees over here. I'm going to darken this up anyway. I got too light on that because of the, uh, with the liquid white. I put too much in there, uh, but we can still come back and redo that and darken it up. So we're seeing another layer of trees here. Um, out here we have sort of a horizon line that shows. And we're starting to get some of this look now of some of the land. This land is going to be in shadow as well. Um, but we can put the dark down and then we can come back and actually put light over it to highlight it. Um, have some bushes in here that sort of are in silhouette. Okay, how's that looking? Let me step back. You have to step back away from your canvas to look at these things to make sure that uh, they look right. You see a lot of things when you step back that you don't see when you're up close. Okay, um, darker here maybe. Again, I'm trying to get this a different line of up and down. I don't want this to be a set of rectangular trees through here. I want to have some movement in it, some uh, variation, alternation, colors. Um, put a big tree there. There we go. Okay. Um, that's starting to get the look and feel I think I want. Now let's go back and see what we can do with this barn. It's kind of sitting in shadow too. It's really dark. Um, I'm going to come back over it with uh, a little bit of this violet uh, and see if I can get a uh, nice sort of a misty color here. Maybe I'll put a little black in it. So we have this barn that sticks up. A silo sticking up here in the sky and then we have another silo next to it, a smaller one and then we have a flat barn roof And over here somewhere we have another little building that's slightly in fog as well. Maybe a little too light, but... So these buildings don't have to be perfectly defined, but they have to be, they have to kind of show as if they're they're in the uh, in the foggy area here, so we're putting in some more misting. Take a little bit of this white. You take titanium or take uh, liquid white, and we'll put in a little more fogginess here to sort of tie these together, if you will. Um, maybe a little liquid white. Let's see if that. <laughs> helps us down here in this area. We've got some, it's a little bit too much white, but let's see if we can kind of fuzz it up. Fog, low fog rolling in here in front of these buildings. Just at the bottom. So each time you, low, you lighten this up like this, you end up with a uh, another layer of uh, 
landscape that uh, makes the painting look deeper, has more, more depth, the more layers you put in it. Okay, something like this. Got a lot of fog here. There's a... Okay, now is that farm building standing out? I think it's not too bad. Um, since it is in shadow, um, silhouette, if you will, I want to put a little bit of dark on one side here that would actually represent the shadow side of these two silos, which helps define them. Also help define this little building here that's attached to it. The front of this building is going to be darker than the than the uh, roof because the roof is getting light from the sky. Same over here with this little building. Um, put just a little, little bit of darker paint here underneath it to give it a shadow. And uh, don't have to do too much more than that. Um, maybe here we'll put a little vertical streaks to sort of outline this building again. Yeah, we're getting something that looks like there's a bit of a, a building back there. These are kind of in the distance. You don't have to make them perfect, but you want to give some structure to show that there's something going on back there. Okay, now how are we going to do the rest of this foreground now? Um, this is going to have different colors and I'm going to try to make this sort of blend together. Um, so it's sort of an early morning light and uh, these things are getting sun on them, but the sun is also going to be coming over and hitting the ground and grasses out here in the foreground that are could be anything, it could be grass, it could be a, a field of corn or what they call beans here, soybeans uh, have different shades of brown and, and green in it um, 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 go back and put a little darker in. Put some dark in here. We'll show some some uh, darker colors that uh, help us define the landscape a little bit. If we have the, the ground going up and down, that gets some more ochre, ochre and bright red. Let's see what that's looking like. Step back, take a look. Okay. More lavender in here. We don't want it to be Just using sap green, I'm not even mixing my mixing any greens here. It's just uh, putting in some colors here to sort of give myself some more textures. Putting a few things back here that look like there might be some other greenery back there in the distance that's starting to show up. The sun, as the sun comes up, these uh, starts to highlight this this grass and land here. Some browns in there, browns and ochres. I'm just covering the canvas now, no particular 
thing in mind other than just get it covered. It's taking a little longer than I want, but uh, let's just put it in here. Put a little more lavender in there. there. We've got uh, put in a few uh, fence posts over here on the left side that really weren't in the original painting, but we'll stick those in to give us some something in the foreground to help give this whole painting uh, scale. So. Darken this lower left corner a little bit and just fade it back. So we can have some rocks and maybe a few, couple of uh, two or three fence posts here. And I want to sort of kind of connect this together. It's got, I've got the colors almost too distinct between the, the middle ground and the, the foreground here. So I want to sort of put in some things that look like there's some either bushes or other grassy areas here to sort of connect this together. Otherwise we're going to have a, we don't want it to look like two separate paintings, top and the bottom half. Uh, so put in some things that uh, might be show up in the field out here. They don't have to be, I'm not painting anything specific, I'm just putting in some brush strokes to make it look like we've got some texture in this land over here. There's some. It may be land that has nothing planted in it. It's just uh, going to seed out there. Um, that helps. Um, see, I'm going to take a little bit of this color that we had for the sky. I want to echo it down here in the foreground. So I'm picking up some white with this color I had over here on my palette. And uh, I want to just hit in some spots here that the sun might be hitting off of some some areas, some highlights here, some highlighted areas of this land. Um, like that. And we'll move a few of these up in there just to uh, kind of connect things together. I want to have this, I don't want to have this like divided. It looked like there was a big division there in the lower quadrant and I don't want it to look too too divided, but um, that's starting to look halfway decent here. Um, let me see. Okay, let's look at these. Let's maybe put in a get my knife out here, and uh, I will use this palette knife. I'm going to get some browns, and I uh, actually taped the back of my palette knife like uh, Bob Ross does, just so that it doesn't reflect in the camera. I noticed in one of my other videos I had this crazy uh, reflection coming back at me and I didn't particularly like that. So so we put these things here like this, like fence posts are sticking out here of the ground. Uh, And don't make them all alike, and don't make them all the same angle. Make them something like this. I have one that's got a little more lightness to it. Maybe this one's really falling over a little bit. Something like that. on my knife and see take a little bit of this uh, color here and see if we can highlight a little bit of these here maybe something like that um, so these posts in the foreground are going to help us get a little scale in this painting. And uh, <clears throat> I want to try a little bit of uh, my uh, rigger brush here, script liner. And uh, we'll throw a little 
a couple things of wire in here to make it look like these things had wire on them at one time. Um, something like this. Kind of dilapidated, kind of falling apart, falling down uh, in some cases. Um, and uh, maybe there's, uh, we need to connect those to make sure they're connected to the ground. Let's put a couple of, just like this, if we show the ground here coming up and connect them. This would be likely covered by a frame down here anyway, but let's make sure we don't have, uh, these things look like they're glued on, which is, we don't want to have. Okay, and then to kind of to balance that out, let's put on the right side, let's put a maybe a few rocks over here. Put in uh, something that looks like there's some rock, rocky uh, areas over here. Like that. Maybe there's a rock or two sitting in this area as well. I don't know. None of this was in the photograph, but I'm just trying to do it from an artistic, using my artistic license here to sort of help... Uh, balance this painting out at the bottom. We got a nice heavy top in the sky and uh, got some interesting things here in the foreground. Um, let's see if we can put a little highlight on those. Maybe I'll use my knife again to uh, put a little highlight on the top of those with the same light color like right here maybe where the light's hitting them. I have a highlight. That will help just find these things. A light over here on this side. That. Um, also, I want this highlight, a little highlight on top of these, this barn up here, if I can get it to look right. So there's a little light hitting on top of these buildings here. We'll just throw a little bit on there like that, if I can get it to work. Okay. Even on this, even on this uh, silo, Let's see if I can get a little bit of this on there, maybe a little bit of this color. I don't want it to be white. I want it to have this sort of this orangey pink color. Let's see if I can put something up here to highlight this top, maybe. It's not very. Noticeable. Using my script liner and a lot of uh, thinner. Let's see if I can kind of identify this a little better, like that. Maybe there's a little, little bit on top of this silo back here. Probably very hard to see that in this in the video. I don't know. Um, but up close, it looks like it needs it to me. So that's kind of why I'm doing it here to sort of highlight these objects so they're not just totally bland sitting there in the background, middle ground. Put a little curvature on them, we can actually show that they're rounded. Um, top of this roof, I'll touch it again here, maybe over here. Okay, that's. That's getting a little bit of it that I wanted. Um, maybe while I've got this script liner going, let's come back and get a little dark, some of this black, and uh, touch under the eave here just to help define this this building a little bit better. This one over here the same way. That shows we got some definition going on out there, even though they're they're in a mist, in a fog. Um, it helps highlight highlighting the roof of those helps it uh, helps sell the the idea that we've got a sunrise here and it's kind of morning. We do have some objects that we want to distinguish back here. Let's feather it in with this brush. Um, more white maybe on this 
the big one is a little, should be the same color as the sky up there almost, if I can make it that way, and then feather it in. All right, I think. I don't want to do too much more. Okay, um, step back, look at it, see if it's close to uh, what we have. It's actually more distinct than the photograph, um, but I think it makes a pleasing scene representative of many farms in Indiana that have uh, foggy fogginess this time of year. We're talking about September, October time frame, and uh, the mornings are cool, and the uh, Humidity is high, and the uh, makes these uh, makes these foggy mornings uh, something to photograph and to see. I hope you like this. Um, I think that's all I want to do for this painting. And uh, so let me, before I leave, let me zoom in a little bit and let you see some of the detail here, if I can. Um, you see the uh, that makes a good painting right there if I just cropped it even there that's a nice looking painting um, but um, I'll move it back and forth here a little bit I have my remote zoom controller here that lets me zoom my camera in and out so anyway um, I will zoom back and uh, say I'm glad you're with me today and thanks for watching. Um, I'm Larry Hamilton and I'll be on YouTube and uh, be making some DVDs out of these uh, but in every case the YouTube video is full length video from the time it took me to paint this. Whatever the length of this video is I don't edit anything out. I leave it full length. So I hope you like that and I hope you keep watching, keep subscribing and if you haven't subscribed please do so and uh, I'll keep putting videos out. I put them out about maybe at the rate of two a month at least one a month and maybe two two in some months and I mix them up between watercolors and oil paintings and uh, so I'm trying to do both to show you the difference in techniques and uh, and I hope you like it and until uh, I see you again I'll sign off for now saying goodbye so long